Hello everybody, I'm Dana Lyons here with the Cows with Guns report here in Bellingham, Washington, uh, just south of Canada. And today we are speaking with Mayor Dan Pike, the Mayor of Bellingham. Thanks for being with us, Dan. Well, thanks for having me, Dana. Yes, a pleasure. And we are standing right next to the railroad tracks. We're about five feet away in the so southern part of Bellingham where the proposed coal trains would be entering our city, going up to the proposed coal port. Uh, the, the port is uh, being proposed to take super tankers of coal from here over to China, from Wyoming and Montana, where they would bring it through Bellingham by train. Uh, Mayor Pike, just tell us a little bit more about the port and the coal train and your position on it. Sure. Well, the proposal is to build um, a, a, a large deep water pier up at Cherry Point. So it's about 10-15 miles northwest of Bellingham and it'll be the largest coal export facility in North America, 48 million tons per year. Um, they've already got a contract in hand to ship half that amount, 24 million tons a year, for at least 40 years. So for, ab for about a billion tons, uh, they've already got contracts in hand. Now, you know, some people get confused because they say they're going to build a multi-purpose cargo facility. A a and in fairness, they are planning, perhaps at some point, if it makes some money, to build a very small add-on uh, facility that would ship another 6 million tons a year of other commodities. But the reality is, is to most of us, a billion tons, that's pretty much approaching what looks like a coal pier to us. And and it's it would be something that would be damaging not only to, to our to our local environment but to our to our regional state and, and frankly global environments. Um, coal is is one of the biggest sinks of of uh, greenhouse gases. Um, burning them in China just releases them. Uh, a lot of the, the heavy metals and the like end up back in our lakes over here. Uh, but then beyond that, it also uh, threatens uh, the viability of our local sustainable salmon fishery. We got about $75 million in uh, income produced a couple of years ago from our sockeye run. We had a very big pink run this year. Um, it threatens uh, some of the, the um, resident and migratory whale groups, uh, orcas and, and grays. Um, and as well, it also, um, the diesel particulate from both the uh, Cape class ships, so they're actually the largest ships in the world in terms of the, wow. the volume of cargo they carry. The diesel particulate from those ships that are, that are constantly having their engines running while they're loading, and they load for two to three days at a time, about 500 ships a year, so that's about, so you double that, so nearly a thousand trips a year in and out of that port. Uh, then on top of that, there's uh, 20 trains a day. Each of those trains has four engines pulling it, also spewing diesel particulate. This area is one of the most sensitive air sheds in the country. Um, to diesel particulate exhaust, and, the, and it particularly is challenging to uh, people with compromised immune systems. So the very young, the very old, people with autoimmune disorders such as AIDS, um, are put at particular risk from this. And, and and so the bottom line is is that that we know people's health will be more than compromised. Some people will probably die as a result of this coming forward. We don't know for sure what will happen because we haven't had a health impact assessment. But about half the doctors in Whatcom County, so almost 200 doctors at this point, have signed on to a letter saying they are very concerned about the health impacts uh, of this proposal and they think that the state should also be concerned and require the, the proponents do a full health impact assessment as an adjunct to the environmental impact assessment that's being done. There's also public safety concerns. There's also economic development concerns. Um, for the city of Bellingham, we have the largest largest waterfront redevelopment in uh, North America right now, a little bit over 200 acres on our waterfront on the old uh, Georgia Pacific pulp mill site. Uh, that site is bisected by the train tracks. It's a site that we'd like to put in sustainable businesses, um, condos, uh, residential, retail, light industry, all, all, all with a focus on sustainability, which is the city's focus, has been for the last um, couple of decades. Uh, last year we were, we were called the number one smarter city in the U.S. by the National Resources Defense Council uh, because of our focus on sustainability and how we're delivering on that promise. Um, I don't think we're going to be as successful in attracting sustainable businesses if they see the largest coal export facility in North America um, not too far from their backyard and uh, 20 coal trains a day, um, the heaviest and, and some of the longest trains that Burlington Northern runs, running through their backyard of where they think of, where they might be thinking about landing their businesses. So it's not just us, the Port of Skagit, which is an economic development agency, um, not particularly noted for being 
for having environmental concerns first and foremost, although I'm sure they pay attention to them, but, but they spoke up and they said uh, that from their perspective this would be a disaster to this area if the, if the economic impacts were not fully mitigated, if, if, the, if the rail crossings were not grade separated or other, other accommodations made to address the damage done to uh, the local communities that these trains pass through all the way from Montana to Bellingham. Yes, and the, so the, the people of Bellingham are up against some pretty big economic foes to try to stop this coal port and these coal trains. Uh, I saw you give a speech on July 4th, and you, you told the story of uh, some local mayors in Skagit standing up to uh, the proposed nuclear power plants there in the 70s, and, and, and it, was, it was very inspiring in how, how, we, how we can do that here. Tell, tell us that story and how it might apply to this situation. Sure, and, I th and I've since heard of another story that I think is all also illustrative. So, so there was this, there was the nuclear plant in the Skagit River flood basin um, that people stood up and stopped. There was also a proposal to put in a gas-fired uh, um, turbine up at Sumas uh, to produce electricity without. Um, regard to the greenhouse gas impacts or any offsets or mitigations for that. And in both of those cases, um, people stood up. And in the case of the Skagit uh, nuclear plants, um, you know, that proposal had the Democratic governor at the time, this was in the 70s, it had the Democratic legislators and the Republican legislators. It had uh, big business and big labor all lined up pushing this forward uh, as, as one of the projects of the Washington public power supply system. Uh, but, but folks locally recognized that from their perspective it didn't make sense. They didn't care, you know, what the emperor was saying. They knew that the emperor had no clothes. And so they were standing up and saying, no, we think this is a bad idea. And one of the things that happens sometimes is when people say that, even if there's quite a few people saying it, unless there's some elected standing with them, um, they get dismissed as sort of fringe elements. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but fortunately then, um, the mayor, or the, the, uh, the, one of the Skagit County Commissioners, a man named Bud Norris, who currently is the mayor of Mount Vernon, um, he agreed, and he thought it didn't make sense either. And, and you know, here's somebody who is is pretty far removed from me politically on most things. He's he's far to the right. I'm I'm more in the progressive realm of things. But but you know, sometimes things are not partisan. It's just something. It's just a clear matter of, of right and wrong. And so he stood up and he helped provide a, a louder voice for the folks that were concerned about the, the nuclear plant and working with all those folks that were concerned, they succeeded in stopping it. Um, they had a plebiscite. It was very clear that most of the people in Skagit County were against it. He was critical in getting that, that, that vote put to the people. Um, and as a result of that, the county was able to stop it. You know, in this case, um, you know, I think that this, this election this fall is going to be something of a referendum. You know, thinking about the other project I talked about, the, the uh, Sumas Cogen plant, I mean, that was a project that my that my opponent was in favor of she voted for it in the legislature um, but again local community members stood up and said this is a bad idea you can't build something like that especially you can't build something like that without requiring appropriate remediation and mitigation of the greenhouse gas impacts you know this is back in in the early 2000s 2000 2001 we already knew back then about greenhouse gases it was climate change was already a reality and something that was well understood scientifically and and understood by many, many folks that, that are paying attention politically. And, and these days, it's really irrefutable. Um, but again, that was a project that had a lot of folks behind it. It was at a time when there was uh, significant unemployment, particularly in that area. And, and, and I think that one of the problems is that a lot of the corporations that push these ideas, they push them because they want to make the money off of them and they're not as concerned about the long-term impacts their motive is making money now. Um, and they push them through fear. And so they take advantage of the fear of labor groups, of, of individual households, of people out of work that are legitimately scared about their future. And they play on that fear in a way that I think is really unfortunate and unfair. Uh, I think that to get to a better future, we should be looking at, at better alternatives. So one of the things that really bothers me in this county right now is we've got effectively a moratorium on building wind turbines, wind energy turbines in this county um, because of nimbyism, ironically, by property rights activists who usually want to let anybody do anything on their property, but in this particular case, they want to block people um, from being able to even consider looking at wind turbines. Ironically, I've talked to proponents of wind turbines, and they say they could put more people to work right now 
than the Cherry Point proposal would put to work um, permanently by by building uh, a wind farm up at Cherry Point, which ironically has a great profile for providing wind energy, and we could be providing local clean energy to our communities as a and jobs, sustainable green jobs to our community, as opposed to shipping you know, a non-renewable resource over to China where it just adds to the global warming problem worldwide and frankly also adds to the competitive challenges that the U.S. faces because we subsidize that coal extracting it out of the ground in, in Wyoming or Montana. We subsidize its trip across the country by rail and, and the proponents of this project want us to subsidize building of the port to the tune of, of hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, so we can provide cheaper coal to China to ship us plastic crap and, and pollution it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Well, uh, um, let me know how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell you how you, re how you really feel, Mayor Pike. Well, Mayor Pike uh, has agreed to sing a song, and we're going to keep that secret for one more question here. But uh, we're going to do a little song together here in a second. But uh, just uh, in some, uh, you know, any any closing thoughts. Uh, from my point of view, being a mayor looks like a pretty tough job. You got a you got a tight family here. You got to see everybody every day. Uh, any particularly inspiring moments as mayor or insights uh, you've had as being a mayor of a small city like Bellingham, Washington? Well, I think the thing is, is Bellingham is just a wonderful community. I mean, I loved this community before I became its mayor. I love it even more now because there are so many people that care so deeply and have such great capacity. Um, to add to it and so we've got a lot of people that care deeply and get very involved on a lot of issues so we have we're a town of about 80,000 but really I'd say we have the capacity of a town three or four times our size you know an average you know quarter million or, or third of a million population town we have that kind of capacity here and and we are a community that has for many many years focused on doing the right thing and so this is a community that that in no way is willing to step back take that step backwards that this this proposal would represent and I have full faith you know as Bill McKibben said uh, he came here um, in June and he said you know Bellingham has the privilege of being at the point of the spear in the climate change debate and and at first I thought well what kind of privilege is that because it isn't fun being in the crosshairs of people that want to make a lot of money and you're in their way um, because they bring a lot of resources to bear uh, and, and they are uh, but on the other hand, I thought, you know, it is a privilege to know that you live in a community that gets it enough that we can take on that challenge, we can understand it, and we can win. And we will. Right on. Well, I really appreciate your strong stance on the coal train and everything else you're doing, Mayor Pike. Thank you. Now we'll turn this off and get ready for our song. Okay. Stay tuned. Daddy, won't you take me down to Whatcom County by the Green Nooksack River and Bellingham Bay? Lays just there for the asking, never stolen by Peabody and SSA. All right. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right. Mayor. Thank you, man.